So as of recording this, I have just finished Assassin's Creed Valhalla's main story, and I gotta say, I, I wanted to get my raw thoughts on here just to kind of, this isn't going to be overly scripted or anything. Uh, I just want to give kind of things that stuck out to me the most, and just generally, if this is a good or a bad ending, uh, how did it make me feel, where we're going from here, and all kinds of things like that. So of course, there will be spoilers in this video, so if you haven't finished the main story, then of course, come back once you have, or if you just don't care about spoilers then stay tuned. Now before we get into all that, I am recording this just before Christmas so I want to wish you a merry thickmas from the past version of Jaws here. But since you'll be watching this after Christmas I hope you did have a merry thickmas and uh, that does not mean that we stop giving out nice thick and juicy likes after thickmas. We must still do that so be sure if you do enjoy the video to leave it a nice thick and juicy like. Thank you. Also, if you do enjoy this kind of content as well as any of the other content that I do, then be sure to hit that big red sexy subscribe button right underneath the video. Also got to quickly shout out my channel members. You guys help make these videos possible. So thank you, of course. And if you want to get the exclusive perks that they get as well as join this dank community, then make sure you check out that link in the description down below. So the ending of this game, what does it mean? Why was it so confusing? Because I was pretty confused and that's why I have so many thoughts. I had to really, I'm just like, I'm about to explode, honestly. My brain is just on fire. I feel like a sage. I feel like one of the sages in the game. I'm just all over the place. But I do have a few thoughts. After I kind of, I digested it for a couple minutes. I was like, why is this this way? Why, why is this doing this? Who is this guy? And why is he doing this thing? And I came to a couple of quick conclusions. Now, of course, like I said, this isn't the most in-depth video, so I may not even have everything 100% correct in terms of how I'm interpreting it, but this is just what I got off the bat. So the first thing I want to talk about is how it elevates the mythical story. Now, for me personally, I do not like the mythical aspects of these games. I don't like any of the magical stuff. It just... It's not Assassin's Creed to me. And personally, I would have preferred the mythical arcs in the game to actually portray the memories of Odin as an Isu rather than as some mythical being. But I kind of understand a little bit better now why it's portrayed the way it is. Because, of course, even though we're experiencing Odin's actual memories, since Eivor is a sage of Odin, then the world that Odin lives in is based off of what Eivor imagines that world to be. It really is a conflict of Eivor with Odin. And like I said, despite it being his actual memories, it's in a world that Eivor imagines. So that does kind of make sense. Not, uh, it, It's not perfect, obviously. It's not my ideal look at things. And I do think that it's mostly there for the marketing side of things. I think that the arcs that are mythical could have been much shorter and to the point, but that's kind of a critique I have of the game in general. I think it should have been more linear. I think it should have told a much clearer story story one that flowed a little bit better, but I'll get more into that when I actually do my big review of the game and just go over those kinds of things. But that is another thing that did hit me with the end. It didn't feel quite as impactful just because the story is not as linear as I think it should be. It felt like some of the moments with Sigurd and Bassam and Folke were a little too spread out to where a lot of times I would be left feeling a certain thing after a mission, like when we find Sigurd missing his arm, or I guess I should say Sigurd's missing arm, and we wanna chase down Folke, but then we get kind of distracted with two more completely separate arcs in a completely separate part of England. And while I understand that that's kind of how the game is built, and I do like the way that it's set up in arcs because it's like sequences, it did feel a bit random. And because of that, because you're kind of disconnected from it in a lot of ways, I do think that that did have an impact on me not being quite as connected to the ending and it feeling a bit more random when it does start off. It was kind of weird in that sense. And I think that kind of kicked off the confusion aspect of it. Whereas I think most players would have gone into this ending a little bit less confused if it had been more linear you start to draw those connections a little bit quicker rather than 10, 15 minutes after you finish the ending. But I think once you do actually sit down and digest this ending, it is actually a really, really good ending. Uh, I also want to talk about the modern day ending. I thought it was very interesting. I thought it was the best modern day ending we had had since 
Brotherhood. It was very good. We got to see a lot of the things that fans have been itching for for a long time. We got to finally see what the gray looks like. We got to see what device did all the calculations for the Isu and see what possible futures were out there and what happens when that thing becomes corrupted. I also think the explanation for why we can still play as Eivor is much better than what we got in Assassin's Creed 3 after Desmond did die. It makes a lot more sense. Now, even though it makes a lot more sense than finding random pivot points in Connor's memories, there's a couple of plot holes I found for, for Bassam kind of hopping in the animus. Uh, number one, if he already has the skills and training of a mentor hidden one, why does he need to go back and learn Eivor's fighting skills and everything? I mean, maybe, I guess, because he lost to Eivor initially. Maybe that's why, uh, just to try and find out how she went about that thing. But I, I don't know. I can understand him wanting to uncover her secrets, and I think we may get more of an explanation in the DLCs, which I do think is a bit weird that we have to get the complete story through DLCs. Kind of, even though I enjoyed Origins and the various DLCs that had it felt kind of similar in that kind of way, uh, where it feels like we'll get more from that rather than just the main game, which is a little bit disappointing, but we'll just have to wait and see. But I do think that that was a little bit weird. I, I think Bassam's story and his plan was good overall. You can definitely tell when he kind of switches over, he's 100% playing a completely different game than the modern day assassins, as well as uh, Sigurd and Eivor in the past when you are going through that ending sequence. And honestly, I don't know why Sean and Rebecca really just had him chilling there considering he came back and Layla didn't. And also they got to see what happened in the past. It's, they were obviously cautious of him, but they seemed a little too, not really buddy-buddy. They they just, they weren't as hostile as I thought they might have been. But then again, I'm sure he's a pretty formidable opponent in real life like that. So there's definitely some questions to be had, and I am interested to see where it goes from here. Hopefully we get to see more of that in a sequel and they continue this kind of modern day. Obviously, we don't know what a sequel would be or what it would entail, what kind of piece of Eden they're going to be after, or whose ancestors' memories we're going to be after. Uh, obviously, we know that Bassam, since he's a sage of Loki, he's going to want to get Aletheia out of the Staff of Eden. And I do really like that aspect as well, just because it feels like a continuation of the Juno arc that of course got relegated to comic books and kind of thrown away. R.I.P. Patrice Desilets dreams. But I do think this can make up for that because it feels like a revival of that kind of idea. And I think the idea of sages coming out and about is very interesting. Who knows? Maybe whoever we get introduced to next will be a sage of another one of the Norse gods or somebody that was against Loki in order to properly fight him. I think sages are going to come back in a big way like they did in this game. And I, I think I think whatever happens in the next game is going to have to do with stopping Bassem, aka Loki, and his quest to not only release Aletheia, which I think it would be cool to kind of have a bad guy ending where Aletheia finally does get released so we can kind of see that and what could happen to things. I don't know, it's almost a discussion for an entirely different video on its own, but it opens up a ton of possibilities in general. And that's really the point I'm trying to get at is just how good this ending was, because in my opinion, it was one of the better endings we've had in a long, long time for this series, probably the best since the Ezio trilogy and maybe you could say Assassin's Creed 3. That was kind of bittersweet. But for what it does in terms of pushing the franchise forward, in terms of where we can go from here, this is the first time I felt that kind of wonder after finishing one of these games. The first time. Uh, Origins did a decent job. I kind of wondered where Layla and William Miles would go, but then that kind of dropped off because it wasn't all that fleshed out. So Odyssey just kind of threw that in the trash along with a lot of the other lore of things that came before it. So we'll just kind of ignore that one but this one definitely has me thinking and anticipating the next game much much more than I have felt in a while I guess to kind of reiterate my point so that's a huge positive in my opinion and like I've already said we got to see some really really cool things we got to see the things we've wanted for a long time be it Desmond finally seeing him in the grave we get to see Layla get a true hero send-off and she did kind of sacrifice herself but it's in the same way that Desmond did and it's for the greater good of the living I would have liked to have seen that follow through in the ancestor story we see Eivor when she detaches away from Odin and she's like I need to serve the living Layla kind of takes that lesson and of course that leads to her being willing to give herself for the cause for the living and in doing so I do wish that Eivor 
would have chosen to go with the hidden ones. I do think considering how the game went, all the various gear we can wear, that it's very assassin. I mean, we have a hidden blade since basically the beginning of the game for crying out loud. Uh, there's a ton of things that just align with us going to be a hidden one. And then it just doesn't happen despite some of the lessons that are learned along the way, particularly the ending. And that part just doesn't feel consistent. And I don't know, it's something that we've missed for a long time. A lot of fans, we just want to play as assassins and it would have been very satisfying to go into even the post game kind of gameplay as someone who is an assassin or a hidden one but that just it doesn't happen and it's disappointing because it's what we've wanted for a while so hopefully the next game is all about assassins versus templars we play as someone who is an assassin not someone who fights with the assassins or is an ally of the assassins or in the worst possible case a mystios <laughs> i had to throw that one in there so we'll we'll see. Uh, I do think it was a huge missed opportunity. Maybe there's an explanation for it that I'm just not connecting right now. But regardless, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Let me know your thoughts on the ending of Assassin's Creed Valhalla down below. And uh, yeah, this was a bit less structured of a video for sure. That is for sure. I do think that the ending was really good. So yeah, be on the lookout. My next video will be a bit more structured and more of the usual kind of content. But regardless, I hope you guys had an awesome thickness. And I'll see you guys in the next video.